I'm Dr. Rudy Cashman, neurosurgeon, Fort Wayne, Indiana, for 41 years. But I'm only 39 years old. I'm a wellness doctor. You can call me Dr. Wellness if you like. And obviously, uh, uh, smoking cessation is part of uh, wellness. And uh, I think this talk this evening will be very helpful uh, for people who are having difficulty uh, stopping smoking. Uh, and uh, it's based on my own experience of 41 years. Also, uh, based on two books, one written by the American Lung Association, The Seven Steps to Stopping Smoking, a very good book. Uh, and this other one by Alan Carr, very famous. He sold uh, five million copies of it. I think also uh, is a very good uh, book. And this experience of myself and the two people that wrote these books uh, is information that, that I'm providing. And they don't uh, totally agree with each other, and I don't agree with parts of theirs. So to, to give you a little bit of a choice, but let's kind of start on this uh, uh, journey. This will be, I think, very interesting for you. And the secret of smoking cessation. Why smoke in the first place? Why do people start smoking? Mo for most people, when you s speak to them, stupid reasons, not a really very good reasons. Uh, matter of fact, most smokers feel that they're trapped by something evil. They like to stop it if they possibly could. They're just not convinced. They're, fear they're fearful. Smokers know they're fools. You don't have to tell them that. Uh, I'm not speaking down to them. I'm just trying to get them well. I, I, I love my patients, frankly, and that's why I'm here. And, uh, and many smokers feel a sense of pleasure when they have the cigarette. Uh, they, they, uh, it makes them uh, feel better. It increases their mood. They're more, a little more optimistic. Uh, it increases their alertness, some would say. They're, they're more awake. It increases their energy, some would say. But in reality, really, when, when they light up, uh, they're satisfying that, easy, that uneasy feeling uh, from the nicotine level dropping in the blood. They're just fooling themselves. They think it makes the mood better. Yeah, it makes the mood better because they're satisfying uh, that a drop in the nicotine level, their addiction. And uh, they misinterpret, uh, really, uh, their feelings. Uh, some feel it increases their energy. Of course, when the, uh, when the nicotine level uh, drops, they lose their energy. And now they smoke, and all of a sudden, they're more energetic. They're fooling themselves. They're fooling themselves. And for some people, it's a habit. You know, you're just in a habit. And they don't even think about it. They just light up uh, when they're on the telephone or something stressful happens. They just light up. It's a habit. Uh, and the one thing I, I'm going to stress tonight at Gate Jail that I think many uh, people who smoke, uh, I'm sorry to say, they're addicted. It's an addiction. It's an addiction like anything else, cocaine, uh, morphine, or whatever. Uh, it's an addiction. And I think you have to face that. Uh, and that maybe help motivate you uh, to, to change. Again, why do we smoke? To try to get a state of peace in our mind? It's like wearing, it, it's like wearing tight shoes, and it feels real good when you untie them. You feel better. That's the way really cigarette smoking is. Uh, the nicotine level drops. You feel terrible. You smoke. And now you feel great. Now you think cigarettes is what's making you feel great. You're only feeling great because the nicotine level had dropped, and you're rewarding yourself by smoking again. So the, there's really no benefit to smoking. People can't really name any one thing it really uh, does for you in a purity standpoint. It's brainwashing, too. We get brainwashed. I mean, I see where the whole family smokes. Uh, I used to lecture to a class downtown where they had some troubled high school kids, and I talked to them on b uh, behavior and, and good health habits and stuff, and 99% of the kids smoked, 99%. And uh, they, they were brainwashing uh, each other. And the 99% uh, uh, said the other 1% was lying. <laughs> Very interesting. Our friends and relatives are doing it. You see whole families uh, doing it. And it's tough to break the habit when you see the whole family smoking. I, I, I fully appreciate that. Uh, some children grow up in a cloud of smoke. Mom and dad are smoking inside the house. And these poor children uh, are breathing in uh, this uh, smoke. Let's continue on the brainwashing a bit here, the sleeping partner. That's really your sleeping partner. We think it relieves stress. Actually, smoking causes stress. It causes stress because the nicotine level drops in 30 minutes, another quarter in another 30 minutes. Now you have that uneasy feeling you need to satisfy it with nicotine, and you get all stressed about it, and now you smoke and you feel better again. The stress is under control. So it's really the, the smoking causes stress. It does not relieve stress. Some people smoke to relieve boredom, no doubt about it. But it causes a warping of our mind. When I speak to some of my patients and you try to break through their logic of, of why they smoke when they know all the health concerns, uh, it, it's really a warped uh, logic. 
uh, they, they really tend to be illogical. And I'm just looking at it from a medical standpoint. I'm not trying to talk down to anyone, and I'm just trying to help people. I'm spending this time tonight. I don't get paid for this. I'm just doing this to help uh, people, so you keep that in mind. And, uh, and they're trying to get at this fear, that empty feeling of nicotine withdrawal. That's really what it's all about. And it's the brainwashing of society around them. Uh, smokers tend to stick, stick together as well as non-smokers stick together. In today's society, we can't smoke in certain places. We see more of that in, in their language, how they speak to each other, uh, how they write letters to the editor when you read them. Uh, it's really a community. And uh, we think we're giving up something by not smoking. But when you don't smoke, you really don't give, you really don't give up anything. There's no benefit to smoking. I mean, I, I, I like to hear what, uh, anything you might suggest, what, what the benefit is. And uh, no, there's not one benefit from smoking cigarettes. Uh, when do we smoke? Stress and smoking. This is a really a good little discussion here. Lots of phone calls are stressful. Most phone calls we get, as a doctor I get, they're stressful. It would be very easy if you're in a certain habits to, to light up a cigarette while, while you're on the phone. It's a stress reaction. Incidentally, switching to cigars causes stress. Don't start cigar smoking. It's even tougher uh, to stop. Chewing tobacco is even tougher to stop. And, uh, so, and when I look at uh, smokers, I mean, I can, when they come into my office to see me, I can tell by looking at them they're stressed. They look older than a stated age, uh, and they look stressed. And if they've been doing it 20 years, they all look, they all look the same. And uh, smoking causes fear and takes away their courage and causes nervousness. Majority of patients with stress are very nervous and they develop what I call mind-body illnesses, which are on my left, on the mind-body index, which I invented. A lot of them have these illnesses from irritable bowel to headaches, tension my, uh, myositis, all sorts of symptoms uh, that stress uh, causes in the body. And, uh, and the more you smoke, the more it takes away courage, the more you are deluding yourself. It's a powerful poison uh, and, and it responds to imaginary stress. Smoking is a cause of stress. It does not relieve stress. Smoking causes stress by withdrawal of nicotine. Let's get that totally straight. Uh, the, the all-nighter, when people stay up all night, they can't sleep. I had a patient in the hospital recently, and the nurse said he, he got up every half hour, and that's when they used to allow smoking uh, in the staircase or things like that in the hospital, uh, say, 15 years ago. And, uh, and, uh, patient got up every 30 minutes and claimed he couldn't smoke. It was a nicotine withdrawal. It was an all-nighter, can't sleep. It was nicotine withdrawal. It was sad to see. And besides, uh, he already had uh, metastatic uh, lung cancer going to his brain. That's the reason I, as a neurosurgeon, was seeing him. And, and, and that's part of the reason I'm here tonight, because as a neurosurgeon, um, lung cancer spreads to the cerebellum and the brain a great deal. So I have seen probably in this 41 years, I'd see easily 1,000 patients who've had lung cancer spread to their brain. So I'm quite familiar uh, with the uh, situation. I, I, I see, still see one probably every uh, two or three weeks. Nicotine takes away withdrawal symptoms, that restless feeling. That's why people smoke. We don't blame withdrawal uh, on the cigarettes, but we give credit for making us feel better. You see my point? We give credit to the cigarette for making us feel better when reality the cigarette caused the problem. You wouldn't have had that empty feeling if you had been a non-smoker. We only smoked to get rid of that uh, empty feeling. I mean, very interesting. It's a high price to pay. Uh, if you look at this, uh, uh, look at those black lungs. They're supposed to be a light pink. That's a typical smoker's lung. It's black with soot. It's carbon in there. It's, it's soot. Uh, this is the typical way a lung looks. When we put patients to sleep for anesthesia for an operation, the anesthesiologist looks down the trachea, and we can see uh, the, the black lungs and the, and the black trachea and the black throat. And uh, of course, these TARs cause lung cancer, quite common. The most common cause of lung cancer, 80% of lung cancer, is, is from smoking. And, and, and I see it in young people. I see it in their 30s. I see women carbony in their 40s. Uh, a reader, beautiful redhead, redhead came in to see me the other day. I wasn't walking straight. And uh, it was ataxic pointing toward the cerebellum. Uh, lung cancer tends to go to the cerebellum a lot. So right away I look for her fingers and see if I could see the stains or I could uh, 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 smell the smoke in her clothes. And sure enough, uh, what, what's the first thing I did? Is get an x-ray of the head? No, x-ray the lung. Sure enough, lung cancer spread to the brain. 
uh, obviously is a very serious uh, situation. We see it at a very young age. Lung, we, we see strokes, heart disease, heart attacks, quite common uh, from smoking. It causes vasospasm of the blood vessels, and if you get some arteriosclerosis to begin with, you smoke, you put some spasm in the vessels, uh, and uh, you get heart attacks, strokes. There's a disease called Burgers disease, 100% related to smoking. You know what happens after a while? They amputate their toes. They don't stop smoking, then they amputate their feet. They don't stop smoking, then they amputate their legs. I've seen the whole thing literally destroying the body. A very tough position to watch, no less what's happening to the poor patient. And a lot of amputations uh, from smokers from vascular disease. Uh, besides, they look a great deal older. When I was talking to these high school kids, I remember this beautiful girl wanted to be a, a model, and she was only 19. She asked, do I look older than I am already? Of course, it takes a few years. But the average smoker, smoker looks about 20 years older than they are, especially in women. You can tell by looking at them, the wrinkled skin, they have the look, and as a stated age of 40, and they look like they're 60, very common. And it's a totally avoidable thing. And of course, we, we speak about, and smokers realize this, they realize this, and, and, I, and you have to f feel for them, the bad odor of their clothes, uh, their house smells. You walk in the house, I know this German man, a friend of mine, when I visit my aunt in Boston. Uh, I really love this man, but you visit his house, it's pure smoke, the whole house was in a very elegant German man. And, I went to visit Boston uh, just a few months ago, and, you know, and he was dead. He was dead. Uh, same age as me. There's no, no reason for it. It was just the smoke. And the smoke in the house, and the car, and the clothing. Your friends uh, uh, can uh, obviously smell it, and it's uh, a very uh, terrible thing. And all the social negatives today. I mean, it used to be that, you know, you light up. It was the social thing to do. But today, I mean, you're a pariah when you light up a cigarette in a restaurant or, or in a social situation. Uh, and it's a difficult thing. That's the reason I'm trying to get you over. How did we ever get started? Peer pressure as kids, peer pressure. A lot of smokers can tell you the day they started. They can tell you the date and the time they ever lit up. And uh, social situations, remember I talked about stress. Uh, it's used to fill many inner needs. It's used to relieve anxiety and depression. But remember, the anxiety and depression are really is to the withdrawal of the nicotine. It wasn't the anxiety to begin with. And, uh, and for psychological reasons. It's a party habit. We go to a party, it's automatic. Light up a cigarette. We're among people, especially fellow smokers. Fraternity house, people are lighting up, we, uh, we light up. Uh, nicotine has a half-life of about 30 minutes. You light up a cigarette, uh, and uh, in about 30 minutes, uh, the, the nicotine level uh, starts dropping. Uh, in about one hour, three-fourths of it is gone, and you light up again. That's why the average cigarette smoke is about, about uh, 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 20 uh, uh, cigarettes a day. We repeat it. It's reinforcement. And uh, we keep on doing it. It gets to be a habit. It's reinforced that feeling, the empty feeling when we light up. And, uh, and that took us in cues that we find, you know, after dinner, got to go outside uh, and, uh, and, and have a smoke. I watched the other day in a restaurant, uh, uh, frankly, very attractive uh, blonde got up and walked outside. Uh, in this uh, restaurant, we wonder why she's going by herself uh, outside. And sure enough, she came right back in. And next time she walked out, she had a pack of cigarettes. She was feeding, she was feeding uh, that, that uh, uh, little empty thing in her brain. She had had a nice dinner. She didn't need that. But uh, that with the withdrawal uh, was not satisfied. So she had to go out and, and, and uh, light up. And uh, on the phone, on the car, people driving home from work calmly light up. Uh, it's like automatic pilot. It's addictive behavior. Remember, if you're smoking, I'm sorry to say, you're an addict. You are a drug addict. Get it straight. That might motivate you to help stop. It's addictive behavior. The beautiful news is, it's frankly, contrary to what you might believe, that difficult to stop. It's the fear that stops you. Withdrawal really is not uh, very tough. And I'll explain that in more detail. To, to keep track of yourself, what it does for you sometimes, uh, the American Lung, Lung Association has this pack track. You can draw it out for you as a copy uh, in the book or online. Uh, so write down the time that you smoked, what you, ne you felt your needs were, what, nudes, what mood you were in, and do it for three or five days. And then put a, three smiley faces there uh, to uh, give some indication of the mood, whether you're feeling neutral, uh, sad, or optimistic. It's called a pack track. And, and, pa and track yourself for three to five days to find out why you're lighting up. 
uh, one card for each pack of cigarettes. And look at your faces, the little smileys that you're drawing out. Were you unhappy? Were you blah? Uh, were, you, were you happy? Whatever. And they're very uh, moods. Uh, we uh, certainly smoke more when we're depressed and sad, but uh, smoking also causes depression. And when we're anxious, we tend to light up. Uh, look at my uh, 20 prescriptions for stress reduction. Look at my website, cashmindmindbody.com. Then look under stress. I have a, a really uh, 20 prescriptions for stress reduction. We learn to practice some of those because uh, uh, to relieve uh, some withdrawal symptoms, if you're trying to, get, for example, to get rid of the cigarettes or to relieve stress in life instead of lighting up, follow some of these 20 prescriptions for stress reduction. Uh, I really thought them through, and I think they're very, uh, they're very uh, good. And uh, so nicotine is as addictive as heroin. Dr. Coop, remember Dr. Coop years ago, certain general in the United States, very uh, health-minded individual. We haven't had anybody since uh, like that since, and uh, he was a real Dr. Wellness. I will, I will tell you, and. Uh, uh, he says addictive as heroin. Uh, Dr. Coop says smokers are addicts. Nicotine is the fastest addictive drug known. Isn't that some sentence? I mean, just think of that. It's the fastest, most addictive drug known. But it's much easier to with, get off it than cocaine uh, or adrenaline or morphine or wh whatever. Uh, one cigarette can be very addictive. One cigarette and you can be addicted. That's frightening. That's really uh, f uh, frightening. Nicotine hits the brain in seven seconds. In, se in seven seconds. The interesting thing is there's no pain from withdrawal. You withdraw from cocaine or heroin or something, there can be some pain from muscle spasms and hallucinations and things. But nicotine withdrawal, there's no pain. There's no pain. And uh, it's contrary to other addictive drugs, so it's much easier. So if your fear is you're going to a painful uh, situation when you do, that's really not true. Most... Uh, Addictive symptoms for nicotine are gone in about five days. 90% of the people will tell you that. 90% of the people uh, will tell you that. that. All the nicotine is out of your body in 21 days. So to, three weeks to go back to great health? I mean, really. I mean, not that difficult. Are you addicted? Let's give yourself a quiz. Do you smoke within 30 minutes of waking up? Okay. Do you smoke 20 cigarettes a day? Okay. And uh, when you can't smoke, do you crave one? It's tough to keep from smoking for more than a few hours. When you're sick in bed, do you smoke? You got all five of these, you're addicted to cigarettes, undoubtedly. And there'll be some which are borderline. And, and, uh, and, and, and let's face it, I mean, you read it in all the literature, uh, is that just like in weight loss program, you know, they're thinking that Heavyweight, pe overweight people, obese people eat the same amount of food as normal weight people. You know, they studied that. Well, somebody was not telling the truth. And, I, and this is true for smokers, too. Many times uh, they do not tell the truth of what really is, is going on. And, uh, and, and not that they're liars. It's just the way the nature of addictions are. And uh, dealing with your addiction. Look at the picture on the right. That's the black lung and all the black uh, dots in there. Uh, uh, dealing with your addiction. To mistakenly think changing the pattern is a value, quit Dr. Alan Carr. Dr. Alan Carr uh, has one approach, five million books he sold. He has many centers throughout Europe, I think one in New York. Very effective uh, smoking cessation. It's a bit different than the Lung Association. But, but, but what he really says, totally stop smoking. Uh, reductionist methods, uh, uh, changing the length of the pattern of your smoking. You don't smoke in the morning now. You only smoke in the evening before you go to bed. He said, that's pure ridiculousness. I would not recommend it. That's Dr. Carr. Uh, remember I said, usually 21 days is out of your blood. And the addiction is over. And you're a free person. The monkey's off your back. The chains are off your hands. Uh, mild withdrawal symptoms. Much less after five days. No pain. I mean, where's the deal, guys? Come on. Tell me the deal. It's your fear. It's your fear that's what may happen, which never does happen, while well, you don't stop. It's, it's, it's fear. Some are helped by fading out, slow withdrawal of nicotine, not recommended by Dr. Carr. In other words, you know, they're, they're 20 cigarettes one day, and, and now they're uh, uh, 18 cigarettes, and then 16 cigarettes, and slowly going down. Uh, Dr. Carr feels 
that does that does not work. That does not work. Uh, uh, very interesting. The uh, if you can't seem to quit, the American Lung Association would say uh, that uh, it's okay to to try that. I, I wouldn't be totally opposed to it, but it, it, let's face it: there's one camp and there's the other camp. So fading is not recommended by Dr. Uh, Carr, and uh, they're recommended by the American Lung Association for difficult cases. That makes sense to me. I mean, that makes sense for tough cases, and I'm sure that, that plenty of them out there uh, fading out slowly uh, uh, has has some value. Uh, Dr. Carr, all or none, quit. And, uh, and, and, and like I said, it's worked for many patients. Nicotine substitutes, gums, sprays, pills, patches. Uh, you're still smoking. I saw a patient recently. Do you smoke? No, I don't smoke. And he came in with two brain hemorrhages, one a year ago, one again now. We couldn't figure out what the reason for all this stuff. And I, well, <laughs> I finally figured it out. The wife fessed up for him and said he was chewing nicotine gum and had done so for 20 years. Hell, he's a smoker. Who is he kidding himself? And, uh, and, and that enters the blood system very quickly goes to the brain. So uh, chewing the gum, uh, you're still smoking. Uh, Dr. Carr would say, don't use these patches. And some have side effects. Some have side effects. Let's face it, this guy had two brain hemorrhages, I think, were directly related to the vasospasm uh, of, of uh, the nicotine gum he was taking. And, uh, and these things have side effects. But for some people, no doubt, uh, it works. And, and you, you can p pick your, your drug and work with your... Uh, doctor, Chantex is one that's mentioned recently also. So with sprays and pills and patches and, and, uh, and, and if you, Dr. Carl's method doesn't work, and you, might, you, you can always try one of these and see if it works until you get the problem solved. And uh, build your motivation. How, how can you get motivated to do, to do this? Just telling you all the bad things it does, uh, people have found when I do it. But we think about it, you're probably going to die younger. You're going to get emphysema. You're going to get heart attacks. You're going to get strokes. Your extremities may get amputated. You're going to look older. I mean, where's the benefit? Where's the benefit? That should be motivation. But for many people, that's the motivation. They think it's going to happen 30 years down the line. Listen, I get lung cancer that I see gone to the brain, age 30, 35. Saw one recently, 38 young man, had a tennis ball sitting there, metastatic lung cancer. They get it in the throat. Some people, they have to remove the throat. And, uh, and take the trachea out because they get lesions in the, in the trachea. And uh, five out of six wish they had never started. Uh, most eventually do quit. And you notice the smoking rate in the nation is slowly uh, going down. And, uh, and remember, though, remember looking at the psychology, you're not giving anything up. What are you giving up? What's the benefit? You're going to be better looking. You're going to be more handsome. You're going to get a bigger job. You're going to be bigger at sports. No way. It's all the other direction. So you're not really, I, I, you cannot really name one benefit. You say stress reduction. Heck, cigarette smoking causes stress. It doesn't relieve stress. And uh, not one benefit. So you're only gaining good health. Uh, take a positive step versus a life of addiction uh, and come out and say, I'm not an addict anymore, and throw them away. Name a quit day. Pick the day you're going to do it. And uh, previous failures are not the future. You may have had some failures. That does not predict the future. This time around, you may have gotten some education. You may have watched this tape and decided, you know, it ain't the big deal I thought it was, and I'm just going to do it. I'm going to name a date. Many have quit successfully and are very happy. They really, uh, uh, I've talked many people into it because I'm a wellness doctor. I, I teach wellness. That's my motivation to be here. And uh, so withdrawal is not painful, contrary to heroin or, or cocaine addiction. Read my book, The Secret of Motivating to Wellness. I just finished a book. It'll be in the stands about six weeks. Uh, you can be able to get Barnes & Noble, Amazon. Uh, Motivating to Wellness, Dr. Rita Cashman, 38 chapters. Maybe you can pick out, maybe in there somewhere is, is yourself and try to motivate yourself to become a well person. I'd say the best approach, odds are if you're a smoker too, you've got other bad habits. Maybe you eat too much. Uh, maybe, the other, other, maybe you drink too much. Maybe, uh, maybe you take some drugs. Who knows? In other words, I say motivate to total wellness. It includes smoking which includes smoking. And uh, that'd be a great idea, to be healthy. Visualize. See yourself as a non-smoker, healthy, living a long life, and to be of a normal intelligence. That's what I'd like you to visualize and motivate yourself to a totally well person and commit yourself to it. So stop the decline of your health. Uh, of your health. Add years to your life. Add years to your life. Improve the environment of your house, car, and closing. But when I... Uh, see families, the whole family smokes, it's extremely sad. Uh, I'll, I'll bury the grandfather, the father, and, and, and also one of the children, 
and I believe me, I've done it. I walk out to talk to them after operating on the metastatic brain tumor, which has, which sometimes has to be removed, not all, but sometimes has to be removed. And I look for the family after the surgery, can find them. Then I wake up and I say, "Huh, they're outside smoking. See it all the time." And I find them out there smoking, even a very loving family, and they're all cigarettes in uh, in, in their hand. Very sad when when dad is dying inside from metastatic cancer. You know, after all, he led the way. He led the way. Uh, he may be dead. He has no problems. It's the kids that are left over that get the problems. Most of them are uh, uh, poor because they've been smoking their, their health away. Maybe some have lost their job because of smokers. Uh, so stop being called an addict. I mean, it's insulting. It's insulting to be called an addict. Improve your social situation. Reduce the embarrassment. Stop the embarrassment of the workplace, the restaurants. It gets worse. It gets worse for you by the weeks. I mean, uh, we don't have a, a total state law yet uh, because we have, we have uh, uh, the uh, Senate and the House here can get together and, and vote for it, which is difficult to believe. Uh, uh, David Long, I hope you're listening. Uh, we need a leadership in getting the job done here. This is not kidding around anymore because a lot of people are, are getting uh, 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 dying from this condition. We need a state law, frankly, myself, I think, uh, to... Uh, you can't smoke in public places and workplaces. I see workers that have to breathe this in, although they don't smoke. Uh, sorry for the editorial, but I'm trying to get people well. And uh, stop the advance of the aging process. You want to look 20 years older than you are? I mean, who wants that? It, of course, cigarette smoking affects your mentality. Much more dementia and Alzheimer's disease than smokers. Much more dementia uh, because it interferes with the, uh, met the metabolism and, and it puts the blood vessels in spasm and it causes high blood pressure. And that affects the brain. You're more likely to have a brain hemorrhage. More likely to have a stroke. And uh, what about the baby and the children at home? I mean, you're pregnant. You're lighting up a cigarette. I mean, you're murdering your child. I mean, you you got to remember that. And I see that. Believe me, I see that. Much higher rate of abnormal children uh, in smokers. No doubt about it. And uh, reasons to quit. I have. I will have more control of my life. Wouldn't that be wonderful? You're not totally dependent on constantly lighting up. And I see it to extremes. I mean, just one cigarette after another all day long, and, and I see it. I'll be healthier, live longer. My heart rate and blood pressure will be lower. Save plenty of money. It's money you're throwing away. Uh, I won't have to sneak around and lie to myself and other people that I'm a smoker. Believe me, I have plenty of silent smokers, a closet smokers, and I see it among the doctors. Very few of them smoke, but there are a few closet smokers there. We know who they are because they smoke there, you know going in the parking lot and going outside, and we know what they're doing. They're not there to take a nap, I'll tell you. Uh, and develop smoke-free breath, closing homes and cars. And uh, I have one relative who, who, who smokes, and he says, oh, I don't smoke anymore, but every time you go near him, how come you smell the smoke? You ask him about it, and he says, oh, I haven't taken it to the cleaners. I certainly believe that. And, and, and how it affects the cars, I'll tell you a funny one. Uh, I had a very fancy car years ago, actually, a Rolls Royce. And, and uh, I, I stop at a gas station all the time to get gas. And this is a slightly impaired young man. Uh, and, and I just won the B tournament in, in tennis at the, at the Wildwood Racquet Club. And I was just feeling great. And he said, could he use my Rolls to, to take uh, his uh, girlfriend uh, to the prom? And, uh, and I said, be glad to. And I was feeling good. And I'd known this boy for a long time. I was glad to do it. So I let him use the, let him use the car. I got it back two days later. It was full of gas. Obviously, he shined it up, but he forgot there's cloth in the ceiling of a Rolls Royce. And it took me a year to get rid of the smoke. So it, it, it does get, it ruins a car. It's difficult to resell a car when it smells like smoke. Same with the hotel room, uh, too. And uh, so reduce your chances of death from heart disease, emphysema, cancer, kidney disease, dementia. This is real. These things are real. Don't think they're not real. And uh, that's about ambivalence, and, and that's your intelligence. Perfectly smart people keep on smoking, and uh, they're, in, they're total, in total denial. So it's about your head and your heart. You've got to make your mind, uh, I want to be healthy. Uh, I failed, and then you punish yourself. No, no reason to that. You're not, you're not stupid, you're, but you're fearful, and you need some help. Look at my stress section of my website, and maybe you can get over the uh, stress. Uh, and, uh, and there's a fear that you'll gain weight. Gain weight. That's totally controllable. Men will be going to go into total wellness. So uh, we'll teach you uh, how to properly eat the right food. That's of no concern. I mean, if you're going to start eating nothing but fat, salt, and sugar, you're going to gain weight. 
And, uh, but if you eat the right food, you will not gain weight. And uh, a lot of us relieve family stresses by quarrels and, uh, uh, that cause stress to us, and we start smoking. Uh, let's develop self-confidence, the positive self-talk. You say to yourself, I can quit. I'm not going to smoke anymore. Uh, then uh, these positive uh, uh, chemicals in your body will start feeding on your brain. Your brain remembers how, how to be well. It does that. But you've got to talk to it. So read Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. Uh, one of his uh, uh, former ministers uh, actually was a patient of mine. I can't believe it. One day he walks in with 21 books of Norman Vincent Peale. I cannot believe it. God sent it to me, no doubt about it. He, he said, I know, doctor, you read them. I read them both twice. Very good books to read about positive thinking. You can, if you think you can, visualization, visualize. That's the language of the unconscious mind. You can speak to your unconscious mind by a picture. Use all your senses, draw a picture. It goes to your brain. The brain doesn't know what's real and phony. And the brain will react to your positive uh, thoughts. And uh, books written by Norman Vincent Peale, great stuff, great stuff. And uh, so switch to a total body wellness. Read my book, Welcome to Your Mind Body. It talks about these illnesses uh, to my left and, and stress and how to relieve it through meditation, relaxation, and yoga and exercise. Very important that you develop some of these things, Tai Chi, Qigong, exercise, uh, to when you get the cue of a cigarette, did you do some of these things? Bre deep breathing techniques that in my 20 prescriptions for stress reduction. Uh, w when that impulse comes that you feel like that empty thing, you get a relief. 20 deep breaths and visualizations, say walking down the beach or dancing, whatever, and you will start feeling better. You won't need that cigarette. Join a non-smoking group. Group therapy is helpful. 30% of the people can stop smoking if they join a group. So that's helpful. And have non-smoking friends. And uh, if you're if you're the only one stopping smoking, the rest of your family lights up at the dinner table, even in the house. I mean, you could be a dead duck. You've got to watch that. You've you got to step outside and say, I, I, I'm not going to have dinner with you. I, I cannot uh, inhale this nicotine when I'm trying to stop smoking. And, uh, and, and keep it gentle. You don't start any family fights. But, but you're going to have to stand up and, and be a man or a woman and, and make the announcement, I'm not going to smoke anymore. Let everybody know it. And, and actually, when you make a commitment like that, you're much more likely to carry it out. That's one of my chapters of motivation, is, is commitment. Make a commitment. And also develop maybe a purpose in life, that now that you're much more healthy, what are you going to do in the future? Get that purpose in your brain, start working on it. Uh, get a soulmate to stop smoking with you. It's very uh, helpful. Uh, Self-help education is, is, is quite important. So if you have a quitting plan, read s some of these books or, or my website or my PowerPoint, which you can print off, cashfromonmoney.com. I'll have on there this PowerPoint. You can print it off. Uh, and educate yourself so you have some understanding, uh, and, and try to get a coach if you can. It could be a neighbor or a friend or, or, or a higher professional person. And I remember what Alan Carr said, Dr. Alan Carr said, cold turkey, just quit. And uh, uh, then again, the lung association says nicotine fading. In other words, try to fade them out if nothing else works. Uh, and for some people, uh, indeed, uh, you, now and then I hear somebody and it worked. But remember, what you're doing is rewarding yourself. When you start fading out, and say you're going to delay that first cigarette in, in, for two hours. You're going to be thinking about it the whole darn time, and you're warping your brain. And then when you get it, uh, it's a huge reward. Now you're making smoking rewarding. When you had the bad habit of smoking 20, 40 cigarettes a day, you never felt good. You never felt good. There was very little reward. There was very little reward. But when you were fading, you would start rewarding yourself uh, uh, because you, you feel these symptoms. Nothing real bad. You feel these symptoms, withdrawal symptoms. Uh, and then you have that cigarette, ah, I feel wonderful. And you're often running again, and you'll, ne you'll never quit. And, uh, and then you start lying to yourself. You have to be very careful. And uh, some medications are helpful. Uh, and uh, some people try hypnosis, hypnosis and acupuncture. It's worked for some people. I think I'm, I'm totally not opposed to that. Name a quitting date. Pick a date that you're going to quit. I, I think that this is important. And then get prepared. You must be prepared. Have education ready uh, and have things ready uh, for the cues uh, that uh, you, what are you going to do when you feel like you just got to have one, whether it's some exercise program, a visualization program, a breathing technique program, a meditation program. Have some program uh, ready. Uh, write it down so that you know what, you, what you're going to do. And, uh, and have a plan for each smoking cue as it occurs after dinner. What are you going to do when, when, that, when you feel you need a cigarette? Uh, what, are you, what are you going to do about it? And uh, have those things all in your mind and set and then do them. And uh, so education is uh, uh, very important. Set a date, stick to it, plan ahead, join a group, or, or pick a friend. 
Have a plan ready for cues of smoking. Have a, have a plan uh, ready. And motivate yourself to wellness. I think if you pick the total wellness picture uh, of weight and smoking, you say, well, geez, I can only take one thing at a time. No, take the whole thing at a time. You're much more likely uh, to get it done because you're now a different person. You're visualizing great health in the future. You're visualizing a purpose for your future. Uh, and uh, you're a totally different person. I think you're much more likely to uh, carry it out. Uh, make a list of what smoking is doing for you. Make a list of what it's doing for me. Now, but be honest about it. I may be honest about it. Don't kid yourself. Uh, and uh, make a list of what non-smoking will do for you. Make a list of all the health things that could, could happen to you. Uh, and visualize being a non-smoker and do it every day. See this picture, this mind picture, because this picture will speak to your unconscious, subconscious mind and send it a message. And send it a message. Uh, that you're, uh, and, and your body remembers what it's like to be well. That, you know where the best doctor in the world lives, frankly? In your own body. There is a doctor in your body. You just got to wake him up. Our body knows what, what it's like to be well. There's memory. Why? Because through evolution, we have 70 trillion cells. They have DNA in them. They've been through an awful lot of stuff to get, to your, to get into your body. They've been through an awful lot. They have a lot of knowledge. The biggest library in the world is the li that beautiful li library I'm sitting here in Allen County, the most beautiful library I personally think in the world, all the functions they have in here. I, I hate to tell you, though, the best library in the world is your own DNA. You're a product of survival of these trillions of years. Uh, and uh, so call upon it for you to go to work by thinking straight. Visualize getting out of the chains the chains and get this monkey off your back. Get the monkey off your back. And uh, visualize not being a drug addict. Admit reality. We have to admit reality. We have to admit we're addicts. We don't want to be addicts. Who the heck wants to be an addict? You've reached the bottom, now look up. Let's take advantage of the 12-step program of alcoholism a little bit because it really is not a great deal different. And uh, you've reached the bottom and, and, and now look up, which could mean you can look to heaven. Ask God's help. Be spiritual. And uh, that's one of the steps of the 12 step. So use spirituality to help you. Say a prayer. Pray every day. If you have inclination to a spirituality and religion, I think it's a very good thing. Because prayers cause secretion of neuropeptides, hormones, neurotransmitters that can help heal you. It's real. It's not phony. It's real. And, uh, and remember, you're not giving anything up. You're stepping from negativity to positive behavior. Normal Vincent Peale, power of positive thinking. Now you're going to the positive uh, uh, behavior. And you're getting away from that slave driver, nicotine. That's a slave driver. He put a monkey on your back. He put you in chains. Get rid of that stuff. And uh, be responsible for yourself. Society teaches us that it may be difficult. It's a totally false, totally false. It is not hard to quit smoking. Alan Carr, through, through his huge uh, uh, programs and classes throughout the world, has clearly proved it. And it, it's not a difficult uh, uh, thing. We think it's difficult. We have fear. You have to shed the fear. What actually is occurring in your body is very little. This is not cocaine or heroin. You can get rid of this thing a lot quicker, but it's more addictive than cocaine and heroin. We might gain weight. We're going into total uh, wellness. That's the reason I say if you eat the correct foods, you're not going to gain weight. Just forget about it. Uh, if you eat fat, salt, and sugar, you're going to gain weight. And uh, the fear of pain, totally false. Fear of the future is ridiculous. You have nothing but good health to look forward to. And uh, when all your friends and relatives smoke, it's a bit of a problem. You've got to get away from them. You've got to announce to them, I have committed to stop smoking, and, and you've got to respect me for that, and you have to deal with them. And uh, that is just a habit is false. It's not just a habit. It's nicotine addiction. The driver of this whole thing is nicotine addiction. Don't kid yourself. You can say this, and you can say that. You can wake up, you say, oh, I'm, I have an insomnia, and you can say all sorts of things. I have a pain. The driver is a dropping nicotine level. That's the driver. It's the addiction. Everything else is excuses. Smoking makes us feel good after meal, but you're satisfying the monster. The monster needs to be satisfied. He made you feel bad. Everybody else after dinner feels great. And you're the, you're the one sitting there, like the blonde we were talking about, and she's not feeling so good. she got to go outside and light up the cigarette and, uh, to make herself feel good because the monster is requiring nicotine to, to bring peace into her brain. Cutting down is a fallacy by Dr. Alan Carr. Uh, he, he, he does not uh, recommend it. 
the Lung Association says if nothing else fails, uh, works, uh, uh, cutting down is helpful. I, I could go along with either one here. Uh, Dr. Carr would say the worst of all worlds is just cutting down and quitting. Because remember what I mentioned, uh, you're giving yourself the big reward if you give yourself some time before you have another cigarette. I feel wonderful, I'm smoking. And uh, in the end, you'll be more miserable psychologically because you'll be looking forward constantly. I'm going to have that one cigarette before I go to sleep. And, uh, and, uh, and all day long, you'll be thinking about it. Uh, believe me, I've heard that from a smoker. And uh, the time gap and now the reward. I've spoken to you about this already. We never felt good after our regular habits. See, when you were regularly smoking your 20, 40 cigarettes, you never felt good. You never really felt great. And you only feel good when, once you cut down and you spend a few hours not smoking, then you have the cigarette. Oh, I feel wonderful. And you're off and running again. So when cutting back, we start feeling better and the cycle begins again. Uh, you can be addicted one cigarette. Let me mention that. And uh, the psychology is, really is the problem, the brainwashing. We've been brainwashed by society. You're brainwashed by the friends. You're brainwashed by the people at the bar. How come the council will pass this law? We can't smoke. Uh, he's a Nazi. This is how we speak. Wait a minute. Let's slow down a minute here. Let's slow down a little bit. Uh, maybe uh, the guy that passed the law is an oncologist who was sick and tired of burying people from lung cancer. Maybe he has a good heart. Let's think about this a little bit. And uh, an alcoholic can't have one drink. No different with nicotine. They don't allow an alcoholic to have one drink, and you're often running in alco and, uh, and you're uh, uh, drinking a great deal again. And remember, they tell the alcoholic that you're an alcoholic really for life. Yeah, I, I think once you smoke cigarettes and you stop it, uh, I don't think you, I would call you a nicotine addict for life. I would not. That's different. Alcohol has more of a grip. And, uh, but but uh, I'll back off of that a little bit because if down the line and you haven't been smoking and you, five years later you have one cigarette, you're probably right off and running uh, just like the alcoholic. So maybe I'll back off that statement a little bit. Uh, addicts are known to be liars about amounts just like dieters. It's all in the books. I'm not saying it. I read that right out, out of a book. But, but it's just normal for all of us. You know, uh, We kid ourselves about what we eat, including myself, uh, some days when I, you know, no, no, no doubt about that. Uh, maybe use a little different term. That we're not truthful. Maybe that's the term. And it's subconscious. Subconscious. And uh, we, we may be perfectly honest in other, other things that we do, but we, we may be not truthful about how much we're eating and how much we're drinking or how much we're smoking. Let's keep that in mind. We'll forget very quickly what actually uh, happened. And uh, cutting down will drag you down, Dr. Alan Carr. And uh, easy way to stop, make a decision and do it, total abstinence. Rejoice. The brainwashing is the problem, not the chemical dependency. Remember what I said? The chemical dependency is not strong. Not, not strong. Have a close look at smokers and non-smokers. You get the picture. You get the picture. Give you reasons to quit. Change your perception. Visualize your future of good health. Realize you can do it. Get rid of the fear. That's nothing to give up. What are you giving up? And, uh, do you want to be known as a drug addict? Let's face the truth. No such sure thing as one cigarette, okay? Most withdrawal symptoms gone in three days, three to five days. They're gone. Uh, all nicotine out of the body in 21 days. I mean, what's the big deal here? And uh, look at, let's look at these lungs here. Look at the black lung on the right. That's a typical smoker for two years. That's what his lungs look like. You want that in your body? You want to go to sleep with that every night? And uh, coughing away, lung cancer coming down the line, emphysema coming down the line, have an oxygen tank in the home, and a, a very big fire hazard. I've seen plenty of these patients. Uh, the house gets burned up. And uh, uh, nicotine replacement therapy, uh, the American Lung Association says it doubles your chance of success. Dr. Carr doesn't, totally disagrees with that. I don't know where the truth lies, where the truth, uh, where the truth is located, but it's probably somewhere in between. And a uh, very famous Dr. Carr says replacement therapy doesn't work. I would try Dr. Carr's approach first, can always use the seven steps of the American Lung Association and, and use nicotine replacement. Uh, I think that wouldn't be a ba uh, bad idea. Uh, addictions generally uh, are not cured by taking small amounts of it. Look at alcohol. They don't allow one drink. Look at cocaine. It's no darn different. Look at cocaine and heroin. They don't allow one little bit. Uh, pick your poison. Group therapy has about 30% success rate. Withdrawal. Withdrawal pangs are mild and subtle. No physical. There's no physical. Empty, restless, dep depressive feeling like something is missing is about all you get. That's what I hear from the majority of smokers. 
That's what I read in all these, uh, all these uh, books. Uh, withdrawal symptoms allow you over in five days. Nicotine out of your body in 21 days. I think we got that point straight here. Remember, it's an addiction. Don't forget that because that could be your biggest motivator. Uh, it's the fastest addictive drug known. It enters the brain faster than heroin, seven seconds. One cigarette and you can be hooked. One cigarette, generally 20 puffs. Your, your lungs are black. We know about the 30-minute half-life. Uh, prepare for the quit day. Have a plan for each smoking cue. Visualize success. Know Dr. Rudy Cashman's 20 prescriptions for stress reduction. Have them ready because as the cues arrive and you, and you try to think of a reason uh, uh, that you're not going to light up, it's good to have some stress reduction techniques. Even, say, 10 deep, long breaths like meditation. Go into a meditative state. Uh, visualize uh, walking down the beach or whatever, dancing or whatever you like, uh, and take 10, 20 deep breaths. If you can't quiet your mind, use a mantra. You, repeat something repeatedly. God, 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 or Satnam, Satnam, Satnam. It'll quiet your mind. Don't think of the past. Don't think of the future. Bring yourself in the present moment. That's meditation. Uh, that, that's uh, meditation. A, a good thing to do. Uh, isn't that religion? This, 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 is, this is wellness healing. Wellness healing. And, uh, and put the quitting day on the calendar. Eliminate urges and eliminate cues. And every month, put another check mark there, another month I didn't smoke. And within a year or so, uh, you'll think what a dumb thing uh, I, I did when I picked up a cigarette in the first place. And then say, I will never to each cue. I will never. Each cue to arise, whether it's dinner or anything, say, I will never smoke again. Say it. It would give a message to your subconscious mind, and it will help you. And uh, it, it's very effective when you announce something. I had a patient years ago, had, it, the mind has tremendous effects on the body. That's why I teach mind body well, uh, uh, illnesses and wellnesses. And I had a cancer patient uh, uh, from a, a metastatic lung cancer, and, he, and uh, he told me, I'm never going to smoke again, and I'm not going to die. Guess what happened? He didn't smoke again, and he didn't die. Very interesting. If when you speak to your brain, it reacts, immunity goes up, uh, and you can help save your life. So positive thinking is a very important thing. And uh, you must totally separate the cue from the cigarette. Be committed. I will never, will your favorite words. Cutting down leads to stronger urges than cold turkey. Remember we talked about that? We talked about that. Not one cigarette. Uh, alter your environment. Get rid of all cigarettes, ashtrays, lighters, and matches. Avoid bars, other places where a lot of people smoke. Obviously, you can't go into a bar where there's lighting over the bar, and you're going to sit there and say, I don't smoke. I mean, that's, that's just not going to work. You're going to breathe, uh, breathe in the uh, uh, fumes, and, and, and you'll want a cigarette so bad you can taste it. Uh, so you're going to have to find out uh, uh, at restaurants and, and places where they don't smoke. Have an unsmoking buddy that can help you. If you've got trouble, call them up. Take a walk. Uh, engineer your social word, uh, world around you. Avoid smoking family members and friends like the plague. You've got to get away from them. Or they'll drag you right back down. Psychologically, they'll say things that make you feel good and give you an excuse to have another cigarette. Remember, their logic many times is warped. There's warped logic there a lot of times. They, they don't they, uh, guard their mind against realizing what's going to happen to them down the line. The, the lung cancer, the vascular disease, the amputations. They, they totally have blocked that off, think it's not going to happen to me. Well, it's going to happen to you. That's why I look at the hospital all day. And uh, so plan to go forward in the future for your success. Develop a wellness program for all your activities. Visualize, visualize uh, uh, good health. Don't waste your lungs on the wrong thing. Get fresh air. Uh, exercise regularly. I think exercise uh, is a, a very good... Uh, uh, thing to do. So let's summarize this uh, situation uh, uh, a little bit. I mean, I'm a, I'm a wellness doctor, okay? So I uh, teach the power of the mind on the human body. Stress, for example, can destroy your body uh, because stress causes secretion of steroids, of cortisone, and the co cortisone affects uh, your icosanoid production in your body, uh, which are the intel chips of your body, the communicators of the body. And if you're stressed out all, all the time, you will destroy the icosanoids that make the anti-inflammatory inflammatory chemicals that prevent cancer, for example, that prevent heart disease, vascular disease, uh, dementia, 
autoimmune diseases, uh, all caused by inflammatory chemicals uh, in, in your body. So uh, to practice stress reduction is very important, uh, very uh, uh, Im important uh, thing uh, to do. I treat a lot of other illnesses caused by the human mind, ir irritable bowel, uh, fibromyalgia, tension myositis, skin rashes. I see a lot of people with a rash on the skin and they're putting all kinds of chemicals on it when in reality, what was the cause of the, this, these rashes? A lot of times it was stress in their life. They lost their job, the factory's closing down. And it's perfectly understandable. Our uh, evolutionary bodies have really not uh, gotten used to the stresses in, in our lives. Uh, ye 10,000 years ago, it was a matter of food, a matter, matter of eating, but now, it's a cell phone, it's the email messages every day which are stressful to me because it's good news, it's bad news. And that adds the phone calls that change every day in neurosurgery, the serious injuries, you got a benign tumor, then a malignant tumor, all day long, it's up and down, all kind of stresses. Uh, things in, in your life is, uh, I'm certain, no different. There's a tremendous amount of financial stress out there in the world today, uh, but you have to deal with it to develop some techniques. Look at my website and use some of the stress reduction uh, uh, techniques. Uh, but many uh, the people find it impossible to deal with these things. They come out with these mind-body illnesses, which are on my, uh, on my left here and, uh, and, and your right, uh, which are uh, uh, very common today. I would say 75% of the people uh, that see a physician today have a physical presentation of stress. But yet, we owe the CTs, MRIs, and we interpret these CTs and MRIs who are often running uh, for an injection and an operation and, and multiple uh, medications, when in reality, we could be a little more gentle, less medication, uh, analyze the reason for the uh, stress uh, situation, try to reduce that. When I see a patient, generally I say to them, and what's going on in your life? Unless they just fell out on an airplane or get hit by, by a semi, I try to find out what kind of a person they, that they are. It's more important, Hippocrates said, to know what kind of a person you're dealing with than the disease that they have. But in today's hurried society, uh, uh, we medical providers aren't talking to the patients uh, very much. But I had a medical student with me all day today, and I uh, try to teach him this to, to uh, ask what's going on in their life. And, uh, and you find it uh, uh, very interesting and that the patient in the end will frankly uh, tell you, uh, you know, the, the diagnosis. Uh, other things that, that uh, we do uh, a great deal, I, I do at the Mind Body Institute, you're welcome to, to visit us there, uh, is, is proper eating. I have a book I'll call The Secret of the Non-Diet for Adults. I have a book I'll call The Secret of the Non-Diet for Children. Uh, very uh, instinct, proper eating. What I'm saying is proper, proper foods. We eat the mad, sad, toxic American diet that's causing this tremendous amount of overweight and obesity, even in teenagers. The cholesterol has been found is elevated in teenagers 50% of the time today, yes. So to know the figures, your own blood figures is very important at any age. Know what your cholesterol is, your triglycerides uh, are What's the sense of grabbing your chest and you have a heart attack and you die? Know the figures now. Why? You can do something about it. Go to, go to a doctor wellness and have you put you on a wellness program uh, to avoid all these illnesses. Save you a lot of trouble. You're going to live longer. And uh, yet remember, my purpose really is to get you to live to be 100 out of sound mind. So I do a lot of teaching how to maintain really a good memory. My, uh, my website, if you go to my front page of my website, and then there's a brain on the left, you hit that, and it leads to another page. And I have a very good page on memory enhancement. Just like the uh, mind-body index to my left, I have the longevity, the longevity memory body index. Uh, very uh, 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 interesting. And I have on there all, about 15 things you can do to improve your memory. The top of the list of improving your memory, eating the proper food. You have a good memory throughout your life. Yeah, fat is destructive to, to the memory. A lot of dementia is related. Uh, to eating the uh, wrong food at a young age. You know, fat makes neurocells more sticky. They don't, they don't work as good. Uh, and uh, so it's very important to eat the right food. Stress reduction. Remember, I said stress destroys the human body because of steroids. 
uh, steroids have to do with metabolism of aconocytes uh, and uh, destroy uh, your memory, cause uh, cancer, inflammation, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, dementia. So it's very important uh, what we eat. Next uh, is exercise. Exercise is, more, is four times more important to your brain than your body because it increases flow of blood, growth of more blood vessels. Also, it stimulates neurotropic factors and you grow more ner ner nerve cells. We have in our body something called neuroplasticity. In other words, your brain can grow cells throughout your life. You, we used to think that you have a certain number of brain cells at age two and that's the end of it. Not true at all. You can grow more bells, brain cells throughout your life, but you have to do the right things, eat the right food, practice uh, stress reduction, uh, exercise, because these growth factors are made and you develop more uh, uh, brain cells. Also, what's our memory? I mean, what is really our memory? It's the amount of neurotransmitters you have. Uh, neurotransmitters are the, that jump from, from the axon to the dendrite and send the message across. Uh, and, uh, and the more neurotransmitters that you have in your brain, the better memory that you're going to have. Education is helpful. College, people with college education must less likely to get uh, dementia. E education later in life, less likely to get dementia. On my website, are great websites you can use to expand your memory. Computer games, say 30 minutes a day, uh, expand uh, your memory. You have things there about art, looking at different art, looking at different music. A great way to improve your memory. So in summary, what, I, what I'd like to tell you, I'm Dr. Wellness. I'm trying to get you well. Smoking use is part of it. I'd like you to aim not just on smoking sensation. I'd like you to aim for total, the total wellness and make up your mind that you're going to be healthy, live to be 100, and, and to have a sound mind. It'll require a commitment. Maybe read my book on motivation coming out shortly, 38 chapters, and how to motivate yourself. We all have tried mo trouble motivating ourselves, including myself. A lot of these problems I speak about on wellness, my God, I've had myself. My, my dad had a deli. You know, we used to eat horrible food, but now I eat good food. And now I teach about it. So we all have things to learn throughout life. And, uh, and uh, you have to remember uh, that, that this talk here is, is meant to make you well. And, and uh, uh, I think it's very important in your life. Uh, and uh, to smoke in sensation is, cessation is really not a difficult thing. I would try to tell you that. And I've speaking, spoken to many people uh, who have uh, uh, quit. Uh, and uh, if you have a little bit of trouble, then you try some of these other methods. But uh, start with education. Get a friend. Uh, jo join a group. Get into exercise, music, art. And I personally think uh, that uh, you can uh, get a job done. I have faith in you. I appreciate very much this opportunity to try to help you. Attend my lectures. I give them all the time at Lufthansa Hospital. Read my DVDs, CDs, uh, and books. I have 10 books. Uh, all about wellness. I wish you good luck. I love you. Thank you.